Hello everyone, I'm Paul Tranny, Principal Evangelist here at Adobe, and I want to share with you the interoperability between Illustrator and Photoshop. We have some updates there, but really I'm going to cover all the ways those two programs work together. So let's go ahead and start in Illustrator. So in Illustrator, what I can do is I can just grab, say for instance, this vector asset and Command C or control C if you're on a PC and do a paste. And these are all the options. Now you actually have more than this. We can kind of go through these. Shape layer, hey, this will work out great. Hey, when I bring it in, guess what? It does it, brings it in as a shape and then I can scale it up. You can see it's a shape-based layer, right? And uh, I could easily change that color and I have access to all of those uh, individual points as well to modify. Okay, so that's a shape-based layer. That works out great, right? Just copy, paste, done, right? We can take this kind of to the next level. Let me uh, show you this and, and why you would actually do some of these other options. So um, let's just take this same, let's take this, uh, it looks like a deer, copying that. We'll paste it in. Now let's take a look at this next one, path. This will come in as a path in Photoshop. So here it is, here's my layer, okay, and here's this vector layer that it creates. You won't see anything, but if you do select uh, any, uh, say for instance, just your direct selection tool in um, good old Photoshop, you could see that's what that is. And in paths, sure enough, here it is. So I actually already made that one from earlier, but you could go ahead and save that path vector mask copy. From there, you can have some fun with this, like say for instance, new layer, since it's a path, we're gonna filter, let's do render, let's do tree, hey, why not? Since it's trying to be camouflage anyways, uh, let's just go ahead and turn that path and uh, sort of stroke that path with obviously a tree, a Robina tree, right? So that's what we could do with paths. So you do have that option uh, if that works for you, right? We could actually go beyond that as well because if I go back into Illustrator, and in this case, I'll take this animal. So this has a freeform gradient on it. So if I copy it, so it's gonna be more complex shape. And again, let's just delete that and uh, paste this in, right? If I paste it in as a shape layer, I'm not gonna get any of those gradients. Path layer is only gonna give me the path. If I do pixel-based layer, it's gonna actually retain those, uh, those gradients, right? As you can see, but you can see over here, hey, it's a pixel-based layer. So keep that in mind, it retains um, all the attributes, but uh, is again, just gonna be pixel-based. Let's go back into uh, good old Illustrator, and let's kind of take this to the next level, because what if it is more complex, like something like this? So now I have text, I have uh, different vector assets right in here. I'm going to take all this, I'm going to copy it, and I'll paste it in here. Paste it in, and this time I'm going to paste it uh, as a smart object. And what I can do is I can paste it as a smart object, and you know what, just put it in your current library right, is one way to do it, if you want to do that, right, so it's totally up to you, if you don't want it cluttered, don't check that, but this means it's going to be a vector smart object, so that's really what this needs to say, a vector smart object, so when I go paste it in, yeah, it comes in, keeps the integrity of the design, right, and maybe we'll just turn off these other layers so we can see it a little bit better, um, and right over here, it says, sure enough, vector smart object. Since it's a vector smart object, uh, it can do a lot of things, but if we go in here and just right click, notice how we can't warp it, we can't do perspective or distort. So there are some limitations to these vector smart objects. They're great because you can double click on them and it will open up and then I can change this color to something else. You get the idea, right? As I change it, we do something like that. Right, and uh, so I could still use that native program, and when I jump back into Photoshop, it updates. Uh, but that's the only limitation right in here. How do you get around that? Right click, convert it to basically a pixel based smart object, right? Convert to smart object. It's now a smart object inside of a smart object. If I do a uh, right click on it after doing a Command T, now I can go ahead and warp this or distort it or whatever I want. So hopefully you get the idea there. It gives you like more control. This actually gives you a lot of control because you still get to use Illustrator to edit it 
and then you still have all of the flexibility uh, of uh, Photoshop in this case, right? Because again, if I double click, guess what? It's a Photoshop big file that actually is inside of a, that has a vector layer inside of it, excuse me, a vector smart object inside of it. Now let me get down to the thing that I wanted to do and the brand new thing that is in good old Photoshop, the interoperability. Let's take something like this owl right made up of a lot of shapes i want to retain all the colors in fact it's simple enough that i want to just continue to edit it in photoshop so i can copy it go into photoshop paste it in and this is the brand new thing paste in as layers okay if we click right here it's going to maintain the attributes structure relative positioning so we'll see actually the layers panel change so we'll click okay boom there it is oh here's our lovely little owl Right, and we can see right over here in my layers panel, here's the owl and then the sub layers within it as well. So if I decide I want to change the uh, wing, for instance, uh, you can see I could do that or make it the same color as the eyes. You get the idea. But I love how it pastes everything in as, guess what? Shape based layers. These are all shape layers. Right, and I can use that any way I want. Now, keep in mind if you say, for instance, try to paste something in that uh, you know uh, is is something exclusively to Illustrator. So, if you're using um, like a, repeat, a radio repeat or repeat grid or something like that, or freeform gradient or something like that, if you copy that, sometimes you'll get this. You'll paste it in. Click OK and says, hey, whoa, sometimes I have to rasterize stuff because guess what? This is Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't have all the features in, in, in it like it does in Illustrator. So I pasted it in and it just rasterizes some things. If we take a look right over here, it actually rasterized the national parks okay? because that was a text layer. I could have vectorized those layers, right? Um, those letters, excuse me, and then it would have been fine, but that's what got rasterized, right? We're actively working on this stuff, but this is great because I could jump in here still and uh, in this case, maybe change the fill to white, just like that, drop it down. You get the idea and here's like my lovely little logo since that's a vector path. I can adjust accordingly, right? So pretty cool. Again, uh, I'll just do a quick paste in again just to bring up this. And you want to jump out to learn more just to just to show you that you could have this complete list of uh, everything you can do and the things you can't. Just all the stuff that we're working on. Like I said, sh some chamfered stuff. You know, if it's if Photoshop can't do it, it's not going to. Um, you know, it's just going to probably rasterize it, but it will always maintain the um, integrity of the design, um, if not its edit editability as well. Now, the pasting as layers is the brand new feature in Photoshop 2022. So make sure you update Photoshop and you'll have that capability. We're working on that constantly, so expect more in that area. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe below and follow me on social media. Let's keep this conversation going. And thanks so much for watching.